Uh, some of you will know um, that my son, Adam, uh, his favourite comic is a guy called Tim Vine. I don't know if we've got that picture. We've got that picture on the thing. I don't know if going to work. Possibly Dan's going to have, but I don't know if that picture's you know, set it up for me. Uh, no, not left it. Not that one. Oh, there he is. There's my son, Adam, with Tim Vine. Uh, <laughs> it's an event we went to a few years ago. Uh, we managed to go and see him at the event. I hope you know Tim Vine. Now, the big question is, if you think about Tim Vine, do you remember some of you this book? Oh. <laughs> do you remember? <laughs> For those that are new here that were never, quite a few years ago now, but, um, somebody bought me this book at Christmas, the Tim Vine joke book. Over 100 uh, fantastic gags. And I decided for the year that I bought, I bought this at Christmas, and I decided for the whole year at the beginning, as I called to worship, someone called out a number between one and a thousand, and we read the joke out um, from the book for the whole year. And I'm thinking, I thought I'd gone that one, but I thought, for all time's sake, <laughs> <laughs> let's come on, somebody give me a number. Number 10. Right, let's go. Number 10. The thing about Tim Vine joke is that I'm pretty safe for whatever the joke is. I know he's going to be safe because he's, got, he's a Christian, you see. So, number 10 says this. The other day, I sat on a hairdryer. That put the wind on me. <laughs> there you go. Come on. <laughs> now, what you don't know about Tim Vine... Uh, Tim Ryan also does a radio show, some of you might know, you might listen to it, uh, called, creatively, no. The Tim Vine Chat Show. And uh, on The Tim Vine Chat Show, he talks to just guests from the, from the, uh, from the audience, and he just pulls them up and he has conversations with them. Uh, but as part of it, he has a number of catchphrases. And uh, so, for example, one of his catchphrases is, if one of his guests, as he's talking to them, if they say something that kind of falls a bit flat, he would say, what's being killed? And the audience shout out, the atmosphere! Yeah. <laughs> that. What's being killed? The atmosphere! Include yeah. that one in my servant's general chance. <laughs> <laughs> but, but another one of his catchphrases is that somebody might say something in his, as he's interviewing them, they might say something like, oh, well, I, and I like chocolate. And then, so then he will say, oh, I like chocolate, you like chocolate, and then he gets the, all the congregation to go, or the audience, we all like, like chocolate. chocolate, you see. So, you know, should we try that? I like chocolate, you like chocolate. We all like, like chocolate. chocolate. You see, it's just like being on the tip of that chat. <laughs> Now, amazingly, all that leads me to today's title. <laughs> Just to get to the title, I know all that. Because I want to say, I need hope, you need hope. We all, we all need, need hope. hope. There you go, we've got that. It's such a journey, but we've got that. I'm sure, that actually, that I've shared on this topic a number of times before, probably recently as well. And so when I, this, when I thought about sharing on this topic again, sort of on Monday, I was a bit reluctant to share on it. But I did feel that it, I did feel again that it was what God had given me to share on. And over the years, I've just learned to just go with it. What I feel God is putting on my heart to share, even if I might have shared on it quite recently. So, blame him. It's an important topic anyway. I think it's always important to be reminded about hope. Because hope is of great value. So I want to talk today about hope. But there will be something a little bit different, I think, as part of it. And there will even be a little bit of a twist as we go along as well. So watch out for those. The first thing I want to say this morning then is we all need hope. We live in a world that needs hope. I think there's a lot of hopelessness around at the moment. And I've probably shared this before, but um, um, one of my favourite school assemblies uh, that I've done in a, in a long time ago, when I was on a year out in a place called Little Lever near Bolton, uh, we did an assembly, there were four of us, four uh, lads went into this assembly, and we did a sketch. And the whole essence of this sketch was that there's four of us, one at a time, going, doom, 
misery, no hope, despair. And that was, it was like it went through the steps, like, through the assembly. I mean, it was just constant. We, there was little bits of things in between that, but it always turned around back to do misery, no hope, despair. And what's really mad is after we shared that assembly in this uh, school, when I was doing my year out with Little Eva, as we walked around the village after that time, wherever we walked around as a group, because we were doing like detached youth work and all that kind of stuff, basically as we walked around Little Eva, you could just hear from kids, No! <laughs> misery! No hope! Despair! And I used to think to myself, you know, that's probably not the best thing for the Christian year out, <laughs> year out team to be known for, but we were in such a kind of a prominent assembly. But we know, don't we, that there are lots of things that can rob people of their hope. And I want you to imagine for yourself, just for a minute, that uh, you have like a hope tank in you. So imagine just part of who you are, you have a tank that's got hope in it, and it's full of hope. But then things start to happen. Things like we might get some bad news and some of our hope is drained away. We're hit with a difficult situation, or we have a concern or worry on our minds. We feel stressed about something. Perhaps we get ill, or we just are kind of swallowed up with, with tiredness. And all these things in some ways can drain that hope tank. That bombardment that we get with things like, well, just so much negativity, especially on the news. Perhaps COVID and the kind of all we've been through has drained some of that hope tank in people. Perhaps it's the concern now about how our bills might rise with all the kind of issues around money and the, the, the electricity bills and all that kind of thing. We're, we're concerned about how it's going to affect us and people we know. Perhaps it's to do with the climate crisis that we're concerned about and again, or the tensions on the Ukraine border. And the list goes on and on and on in many ways, doesn't it? All these things in some shape or form can sometimes drain that, that tank of hope that's in our lives. And sometimes it's just the weight of different things that are pressing down on us. Could even be the weather, couldn't it? <laughs> and I find that what happens when we're kind of in this society and we have all these different things going on, these things can drain our hope tank. They can, in fact, empty in some ways our hope tank. But the second thing is, also I think that sometimes happens is that that tank that should be filled with hope ends up getting filled with other things. So hope becomes despair. Optimism turns to pessimism. Dreams turn to just surviving. <clears throat> so the second thing I need to say this morning is that we have a God of hope. We heard about that if you fix the theme up as we went, we read all those different Bible verses that people just read out from different parts of the Bible. It talked about the fact that we have a God of hope. One that we didn't mention, 1 Peter 1 verse 3 says this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope in the <coughs> resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You know, as a Christian, my faith, I believe, has to become a source of hope in my life. We sing the song, don't we? Cornerstone. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ, his righteousness. We're going to sing that one a little bit later. My faith in Jesus Christ, I believe, <coughs> as a Christian, has to be a hope tank filler in my life. Firstly, hope for eternity. You know, so that's, there's a kind of a, an eternal hope that my relationship with Jesus brings to me. You know, that's why I get blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. 
That one day, because I am a Christian, because I have a relationship with Christ, because I have chosen Christ to be my Lord and Saviour and accepted what he's done for me on the cross, I can have an eternal hope. I can look to the end and not feel that it is the end, that there is hope in my relationship with Christ in that heavenly place one day. But also in my relationship with Christ today, there is hope for the now. In the life that I and we live now, with all its different ingredients, with all its <coughs> different moments, I believe that faith can replenish our hope tank. Often for me it happens in worship. You know, just something beautiful and powerful about being in worship and when, you know, we sing some of these amazing songs that just enable us to connect with faith and connect with our God. And sometimes as we sing those songs, even if I'm not into that worship in that moment, sometimes God just lifts me in that place and fills me with hope for Him. Sometimes I'm encouraged just through prayer, especially perhaps as uh, I'm prayed for, and you know, many times in the past where people come and pray with you, and they, as they pray with you, you just <coughs> feel that sort of download of the Holy Spirit, <coughs> just God lifts you and brings hope into you, even when you're feeling a bit of a struggle and a bit down, and you know, you know the problems haven't all gone away, but he says if you have a renewed hope in Christ, as he fills you with his power and his Holy Spirit, our living hope in Jesus Christ, I believe can keep us going, it can lift us above things, it can bring life, it can give us strength, it can encourage us, even with all the other things that might go on. We have a hope in God as the people of God. Even in a world which, if we're honest, seems to have so many things that will try and empty or take away our hope. But this is where things go a little bit different. Because I want to talk to you just a little bit about hope in the Psalms. You know, in my, I've had these books in my office for some time now. These magazines, I don't know if you've, any of you have seen them, they're entitled Hope. You'll see them on the front cover. And they've been in my office for quite a long time ago. Uh, I've had them just kind of sat there waiting for the right moment and I just felt today was the right moment. I'm sure most people here will know about the organisation the Gideons. Hands up how many still own a little Gideon testament that maybe you were given at school, one of those little red Bibles, you know? So you know, remember that? A lot of schools, I, well I think schools still do that. Um, well most do if you can, but most of you will know about the organisation, the Gideons, and they used to give out these little testaments in all kinds of places, in prisons and in hotels, and, but in schools we remember all that. <coughs> but in the UK, the Gideons are now called Good News for Everyone. That's a long story that I don't really want to get into. But they've changed their name in the UK, they're now called Good News for Everyone. And the Hope magazine is actually something that they produce. This hope magazine's got some lovely pictures in it. There you are. Some really nice bird and some nice scenery. <coughs> and uh, some really nice pictures in the magazine. But also, along over the top of these pictures, there are some Bible verses. And the Bible verses are chosen from the book of Psalms. And they're about encouraging people. I want to read to you what it says about a little bit about this magazine about the book of Psalms, it says this. If you've ever wanted to be honest with God and tell him how you're feeling about what's going on in your life, you'll love these Psalms. They're heartfelt expressions of hope in the midst of pain. They're about real people and real with real problems who are leaning on God when the, west, the rest of the world seems to have forsaken them. They're poetic expressions of people's desperately trusting God when their hearts are filled with despair. The book of Psalms is actually an ancient book of songs that was written over a period of a thousand years by several people, including King David of Israel. The poems set to music were recited and collected over those years until they finally were written down and eventually grouped into a collection that we now know today. Psalms are personal. 
a raw expression of human emotion. They are like they you, sorry, you will likely find them very relatable. As you read some of them, you'll feel like the author is telling exactly how you're feeling. We hope you will discover a new sense of hope as you read them, and a new perspective on God's role in your life. He wants to lead you, shelter you, strengthen you, and most of all, love you. Best of all, many of these psalms are a reminder of the promises God has made. There is comfort in knowing that we follow his leading in our life. <coughs> he will show us the way, as it says in Psalm 119, verse 114. I have put my hope in your word. So this book has these beautiful pictures in, lovely pictures, really colourful pictures. But over the top of some of these pictures, they've chosen some verses from the Psalms to encourage us. And I thought what I'd do is, I'd just read to you a few of the verses that they've picked, not more. And as I read just a few of them, I just want you to listen to them. But I want... I want you to just soak them in really. I want God to use the Holy Spirit to speak to you through them. I want them in some ways to fill your hope tank a little bit this morning so that we as God's people might be a hope filled group of people, a generation. Let me just read to you a few of these Psalms that are in this book that have been produced to us. Uh, the, today. Psalm, no, Psalm 9 says this, <coughs> I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will <coughs> sing the praises of your name, O Most High. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. <coughs> Psalm 30 says this, you turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. That my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord my God, I will praise you forever. Yeah. Psalm 33. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Just take a minute. Psalm 40. I wait patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth will give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam. And the mountains quake with their surging. That's a quite a relevant verse for this weekend, isn't it? As we've watched the news in, uh, in different ways. Psalm, Psalm 30, Psalm 103. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. Psalm 117. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his love towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Psalm 119. My soul is weary with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. You are my refuge and my shield. I have put my hope in your word. Psalm 
Psalm 45. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know your mighty acts and glorious splendour of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises, and faithful in all he does. Could go on, there's lots more to quote. And I just, in some ways it's just a reminder that we have a God of hope. And that we can come to God when the world sort of tries to sort of empty our hope tank and ask him could he fill us again with that hope because hope is so valuable it strengthens, it encourages it lifts us it keeps us going when sometimes all hope is gone so now for the twist so there's a little twist in there and the twist is this let's give away hope Let's give hope away. You know, the church that we have a few links to, well, personally, we're called St. Philip's, it's in Salford, and they produce things called bags of hope. And what they do is they, um, they get a, a special bag and they put ten items, different items in this bag, depending on who they're going to give it away to. So there's a bag that they give away to the homeless, or there's a bag that they give away to asylum seekers, or to vulnerable women, or to people who are living in deprived uh, communities. And what they do is they put different items that are particularly going to be of use and value to people in those communities. And they call them bags of hope, and they go out and they give them out. The other thing I was thinking about is, what some of you will know this, a lot of you will know about this, is something that my, uh, my wife Alison does. Is uh, Every year Alison gets something called a calendar from somebody called Hannah Dunham. And uh, Hannah Dunham, it's a bit like the book in many ways, uh, they do beautiful pictures. And uh, what they do is she entwines kind of Bible verses into the picture. And they're lovely. And then I can't, so every year my wife gets a calendar. Uh, I buy that as part of my Christmas present to me. <laughs> no, sometimes she orders it. <laughs> she orders it, I just wrap it and I get that. <laughs> you know what? But uh, what's great is, and over the number of years now, what she's done is, after each month, she removes um, the picture that particular month. And then what she does is, she uh, goes and gets it framed. And then what she does is, she prays. And she prays about who to give that particular picture, which is a lovely picture, but it's got particular Bible verses. And then she prays about who to give it to. And she gives it away. And I know there's a number of people in church here who have at some point probably received a Hannah Dunnett picture framed from Alison as she's prayed and then felt you were the person that day to give that picture to. Now today, I'm going to give everybody, as you can see, a Hope magazine. And it's got these beautiful pictures with these wonderful verses on from the Psalms. Also, though, in the, the back part of it, it's got John's Gospel as well. So I'm going to give everybody one of these today. And the first thing I want you to do is I want you to use it, and I want you to look at it, and I want you to enjoy it. I hope you'll have a look at it and enjoy it. But last week, Phil Hopwood talked about sharing our faith, didn't he, with those who don't know the good news of Jesus. And how sometimes as Christians we struggle with this. For a number of different reasons, we struggle with sharing the good news with people who perhaps don't know the good news. So I want to challenge you to give this whole magazine away. In many ways, that's what the Gideons, or good news for everybody, produced them for. So that we can give them away to people who don't know Jesus, who don't have the hope of Jesus in their lives. So, I'm going to give you a magazine, four things. First, <coughs> have a look. Read it for a few weeks. <coughs> Enjoy it. Observe. Observe. Absorb. Yeah, so cute. <laughs> the, the, the particular verses. Perhaps as you read one particular verse, it will really speak out to you. Write it down and stick it up somewhere else on your fridge or something. There's a reminder that God nudges you and says, that's for you. Read it and enjoy it. 
But the second thing I want you to do is I want you to pray. And I want you to pray that God, as Alison does with those Hannah Dunner pictures, that God might lay somebody on your heart to give it to you. Or you might have an opportunity somewhere to give the magazine away to somebody. To somebody particularly who perhaps doesn't know Jesus. And give them the magazine. Pass it on. First thing is pray. First thing is pray about it. And then first thing, be courageous and pass it on to them. Say, here, can I give you this? And then the fourth thing you do is you leave it with God. And see what God does. And I say that is because... Phil, again last week, mentioned uh, a talk that I did at Half an Hour with Jesus a few weeks ago where I shared a number of stories. And one of the stories I shared uh, at the Half an Hour with Jesus was about the John 3.16 man. Probably shared this before. But when I was a Christian, when I was a young Christian, um, um, one of the jobs I really wanted, the job that I want to ask God to do, this is what I want to do, God, for the rest of my life, is I want to be the John 3.16 man. Because I knew... Now, all these big sporting events across the world, there was always someone with a banner right, with John 3.16. Now, we probably know, most of us know with John 3.16, probably one of the most famous verses in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And I thought to myself, oh, that's the job for me. I want to travel around all these amazing sporting events. <laughs> not because I was interested in the sporting events, obviously. That, uh, I didn't want to go to the Grand Prix and then to uh, all the Champions League final. And, uh, well, you know, that was just sort of secondary. It was the fact that obviously I was going to hold this banner at these events. That John Finn and you were going to pay for me to do it. Come on. <laughs> Come on, God. That was my dream, my dream job. Second dream was obviously come here. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, but I have to play for Leeds United. Anyway, that's not going to happen. But um, anyway, I, I didn't get a job. But I did hear a story once uh, about uh, a guy who uh, was watching the Super Bowl, in fact. It was on the other day, the Super Bowl. Uh, and uh, but it was, he was watching the Super Bowl in the past. The Super Bowl is a massive American football event. And uh, this guy was watching the Super Bowl. And uh, as he was watching the Super Bowl, he saw in the crowd John 3.16. And this guy at that time thought, I know that verse. He wasn't a Christian, didn't believe in God, but he thought to himself, I, I think I, I, I've heard that verse. I've seen this John 3.16 around before. And it, it kind of, they thought, it's from the Bible, I'm sure it is. So in the half time of, of the Super Bowl, he thought, I'm, gonna, I'm sure I've got a Bible. And he went onto his bookshelves and he, and he kind of found his old tattered Bible from, that he'd been given years ago and he dusted it off and he flicked through until he managed to find that verse, John 3.16, then he read it. For God's soul of the world, that he gave his only son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall not have eternal life. And in that moment, as he read that verse, the Holy Spirit just fell and convicted him of his faith, of, of who he was, but also the fact that there was a God who loved him. And this guy gave his life to Jesus during the halftime show at home of the Super Bowl. Why? Because he read a verse, he saw, well, he didn't read the verse, he just saw the, the number of the verse. And he went away and found it. And in that, God used that to bring him to him. And I say that because perhaps as we give this magazine away and we say, God, who do you want me to give it with to? And then just we leave it with God. It's a reminder of the power of God's word. It's a reminder of the power of God's truth to heal, to restore, to convict, to renew, to bring salvation. So today, that's the twist. Today's about hope. There's so much out there that robs us of our hope. And some of you, even sat here today, may be feeling a little bit hopeless. Your tank has been emptied because of whatever, the circumstances that have been in our world, around your life, how you've been feeling, COVID, fear, it could be anything, couldn't it? Probably a number of things. But I just want to remind you today that we have a God of hope. And that God can fill our hope tank as we come to him. And one of the ways is through his word. And so I want you to take this magazine away and have a look at it, enjoy it maybe for a week or so. But then I want you to pray. God, who could I give it to? And then as you pray, and you pray for that person or an opportunity, 
that that would happen and that you would have the confidence and courage just to say it. You're giving out these magazines at church. Can I have a look at it? I've enjoyed it. Can I now give it to you? And then we leave it with God. And I pray that God would use his word to bring hope to other people. Okay, especially those that don't know the hope of Jesus currently in their lives. Could we do that? I hope so. <laughs> Brother David, may yes. I just say two small things. <laughs> Hope is putting faith to work when doubting would be easier. That is exactly what you said. Hope is putting faith to work when doubting would be easier. And just on a lighter note, last week I went to Royton and bumped into an, a chap my age, exactly my age, I didn't know, he said, hi Ernie, how are you going on? I looked at him, he said, do you know? I said, no, he said, it's Clifford, Clifford Smith. We used to go to school together. Well, I said, blink it, I can't seen you since we were 15 at school. How are you going on, he says. Where are you living? I said, I'm living, I'm living in hope. <laughs> in hope, he says, whereabouts, I know it. He said, I used to go pothole in there in Catholicum. <laughs> what about it, is it? I said, no, spiritually, not physically, spiritually. I'm here now. And we had a good talk on those two small things about hope on what you said today, David, is so close to me. And thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. We're going to sing about hope. We're going to sing the song.
Dressed in his righteousness alone Faultless name 